In this series, we will analyze teams, identify problem areas, and suggest solutions in the form of incoming players. We won't follow gossip, rumors, or conjecture. We don't have inside information, and we're not considering the brand value of players, purely their on-field performance and their suitability for the team in question. Today's team is Manchester United. Welcome to Sensible Transfers. Last season was the fourth time in six campaigns since Sir Alex Ferguson left that Manchester United finished outside of the Premier League's top four. Without Champions League football, it's arguably time that they operated more sustainably and efficiently in the transfer market. Swapping big-name signings for a subtler, more analytical approach could be the way forwards, and by using data to guide us in identifying players that could strengthen key areas in United's squad, that's exactly the approach that we've taken. And it's been a while since Manchester United had a centre-back pairing that they could rely on. Last season, Chris Smalling and Victor Lindelof emerged as the first-choice partnership, though neither has truly convinced during their time at Old Trafford. So far, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has shown he generally prefers a back four, and crucially, there are signs that he wants his team to press higher and more aggressively, which has clear implications for the chosen central defenders. In a high-pressing team, the centre-backs must be quick so as to defend the larger space in behind them. They must also be comfortable in one-on-one -on -one situations, which could arise should the press be broken, while aerial strength is key when dealing with teams who prefer to bypass a press entirely by playing long balls over the top. Manchester United also need centre-backs that are good on the ball. They averaged over 50% possession last season, and central defenders that have poor control, give away possession cheaply, or are completely unable to break lines of solid defence would not fit in. So, our first possible option is Ibrahima Konate. The 20-year-old wins about a third of his defensive duels and dominates with an excellent 64.3% success rate in aerial challenges. That's even higher than Smalling, who is good in such situations. However, he is limited on the ball. Many of his passes by RB Leipzig are long balls, which wouldn't be ideal for a United side increasingly focused on building out from the back. A more well-rounded option could be Mark Oliver Kemp. Relegated from the Bundesliga with Stuttgart, Kempf wins more aerial duels per 90 minutes than Konate, albeit he has a lower percentage of success rate, while also winning more of his attempted defensive duels and making more interceptions. However, while he completes more passes and has a better pass accuracy than any other option considered here, he also loses the ball 8.1 times on average, which is comparatively high. Our pick for this position is Felix Iboa Iboa. He's solid one-on-one, -on -one, winning 2.5 defensive duels on average, with a success rate of 36.5%. In addition, he is strong in the air, winning 58% of all aerial challenges. He makes a good amount of interceptions, doesn't lose the ball often, and has good passing numbers for someone playing in a predominantly defensive gang on side. What stands out is the fact that he plays more forward passes, with higher accuracy than Smalling. He's always looking to advance possession, and when a penetrative passing lane becomes viable, he's decisive in exploiting it. This quality would only be magnified in a Manchester United side that control possession consistently, and at 22 years of age, he represents the sort of long-term signing the club needs to make more often. United have needed a revamp at fullback for several years. Luke Shaw improved at left-back last term, so that side is less of an issue than the right. Diogo Dallo showed great promise, both on the pitch and in terms of his statistics, during his debut season at Old Trafford. But Solskjaer needs a right-back in his prime, someone that can guarantee attacking width and end product in the final third without compromising on defensive solidity. Montpellier's Ruben Aguilla emerged quickly from the data as a serious attacking threat with his deliveries from the right flank. His 44.4% crossing accuracy was far higher than any other candidate. For context, 17.3% more of his crosses found the target than Dallow's. And sample size wasn't the reason behind that number. Aguila also made more crosses per 90 minutes than the Portuguese. Girona's Pedro Porro also stood out as a good attacking outlet, having averaged 2.5 progressive runs, 3.6 dribbles, and 70.5% dribble success rate. However, at 19 years old and with relatively poor defensive stats, he isn't the surefire starter needed to displace Dallow. Our pick for Manchester United at right-back is Ruben Peña. The 27-year-old former winger was converted to a right-back at Ibar following the departure of van der Kappa, and he's shone in the deeper role. He wins 26.6% of his defensive duels, which is exactly the same as Dallo, though going forwards, he offers much more. 
Mobile and good on the ball, he plays 2.7 successful crosses per 90 minutes and finds a teammate with a solid 35.4% of his attempted balls in. His 7.3 passes to the final third and 3.3 passes into the opposition box per 90 are also far higher than anyone else considered here. While his dribbling stats, 4.1 on average and a 77.4% success rate, are equally outstanding. Considering he plays for an aggressive pressing side, is at an age that most consider in or around peak, and would probably be well within budget, Peña is exactly the type of right back Manchester United should be looking at. With Solskjaer likely to line the team up in a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 next season, it's key that they bring in an assured defensive midfielder who can own the role. Nemanja Matic has never fully taken charge of the position and, turning 31 this year, is getting past his best. Meanwhile, Ander Herrera is leaving and Fred has only ever looked comfortable as the playmaking half of a double pivot. If United are to play more proactively, both in terms of pressing higher and passing more progressively through the thirds, they will need someone who can cover for the forward raids of their fullbacks, protect their centre-backs and distribute the ball efficiently. With all of this in mind, we looked into data relating to defensive duels, interceptions, recoveries, passing accuracy and dribbling ability. And one player that captured our attention was Hoffenheim's Florian Grilich. The 23-year-old is a fine reader of the game, which explains why he makes 6.3 interceptions and 12.3 recoveries per 90 minutes. He's also a smooth passer of the ball, who's comfortable dropping between two centre-backs to support build-up and he can play through pressure effectively. However, our pick for this position is Ibrahim Sangare. He averages almost twice as many defensive duels as Matic, and more importantly, his success rate is 6.4% higher. He also makes roughly the same amount of interceptions and recoveries. While he plays fewer accurate passes per 90 minutes, this is expected considering that he plays for a Toulouse team that averaged less than 50% possession. What attracted our attention, however, was his ability to progress the ball. Despite playing for a less attacking team, he only averages 0.5 forward passes fewer than Matic. Meanwhile, he averages twice as many through balls, 0.6 compared to the Serbs 0.3, and completes 2.6 dribbles per 90 compared to Matic's 1.2. These numbers only confirm what the eyes can see when watching Sangare. The 21-year-old keeps possession ticking, he doesn't overcomplicate things and is able to bypass pressure in a variety of ways by passing through the lines or dribbling beyond opponents. These qualities, as well as his tackling, covering and positional awareness, would make him a defensive midfield upgrade for Manchester United. Despite having already signed Daniel James, the club may wish to consider adding to their wide attacking options and there is of course also the news that Paul Pogba would prefer a new challenge, but no clear indication as of yet that the club would let him leave. However, we believe that central defence, right back and defensive midfield are the key areas in which the club need to bolster the next season. And here is what our team would look like. No big names, but players who would suit Solskjaer's tactics while making his side harder to break down. These are sensible transfers. Hello and thank you for watching today's video. I'm Joe. And I'm Alex. Uh, and every Tuesday we bring out a podcast and at the moment we are talking about the same sort of thing as you've just seen in the video. So sensible transfers in which I'll suggest a list of names to Joe for good people to buy for clubs. If you would like to listen to the podcast, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google, or pretty much anywhere that you download your podcasts for. If you would like to watch us, you can search for TIFO Podcast on YouTube, where we film the full episodes and they go up every week. Uh, search for the TIFO Football Podcast and we'll be with you every Tuesday. Thank you again for watching. Thank you.